Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Intel i5-13500 and how well do the integrated UHD 770 graphics hold up in some modern titles and some of your esports favorites. Keep watching to find out more. Now I feel first of all I should apologise for the uh, the video presentation, I've got a bit of a cold at the moment and I feel and look like crap so you'll just be seeing screen crabs which some of you may prefer. So anyway, without further ado, let's get on with it. So obviously, like I said, processor is the Intel 13500, not the K version or the F version, this is the one with integrated graphics, hence why we're doing graphics tests. The settings on the motherboard, which is a B760 motherboard from MSI, which is the Tomahawk version, all of the settings are set to standard. So these are the stock settings, not tweaked anything, not changed anything. So this is the performance you're likely to get out of the box. So just to keep things on a level field. All the games tested will be in 1080p and a combination of low and medium settings where applicable. And I'll put, put those on the screen as well so you can see what they're like. But let's start off first of all with a synthetic. So the first one is gonna be 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme. And this uh, runs basically really, really badly, quite slow, and the uh, end score is only 880 points. A very, very miserable first outing for our processor, but hopefully things will get a little bit better with an eSports title. So let's take a look at CSGO. This is 1080p, medium settings, and we're looking at an average of somewhere in the region of about 40 frames per second, which isn't great and is kind of barely playable. I would suggest realistically trying to get things even lower, maybe even opt for 900p or 720p, depending on if your monitor or settings will cope with that. Really, I think this is going to be something of a reoccurring theme here with this 40 FPS limit. It does appear that that is going to be pretty much what we're going to get at 1080p in the majority of titles. A little bit of a spoiler there, sorry about that. Next up, another esports title. So this is Rocket League. This again, 1080p, medium settings. This actually is slightly better. Now we could tweak it even further, lower the settings more, maybe even drop the resolution. But again, we're looking at somewhere around about the 40 to 60 frames per second. So I'm gonna say it's an average around about 50 frames per second. Overall, relatively playable, and that the actual frame times themselves are pretty good and pretty consistent, so it doesn't feel particularly bad which is going to be the difference in some games where if the frame times are really bad, then it's going to be a horrible experience. Whereas if the frame times are relatively consistent, it is going to feel smoother, regardless of how many frames per second you're actually getting. Now for some people, if you're not buying a dedicated graphics card, it's possibly because you're playing some other titles which don't necessarily require a 3D graphics card. So let's take a look at something which is new for us here. This is Two Point Hospital. This is running at 1080p. And again, it's a very similar story. This actually is quite intensive as it goes. And we're looking here at somewhere in the region of about 30 frames per second as an average. Again, the frame times aren't exactly great, but it does seem playable, is relatively fluid. And if things like Two Point Hospital or Theme Hospital, Theme Park, that kind of thing is your bag, then you may find this to be absolutely fine. Again, reducing the resolution down from 1080p to 900p or 720p, may be beneficial here to get those frames closer to 60. Next up, this is actually one of the highlights of the uh, the video, unfortunately. So yeah, it's not great. This is uh, Fortnite. This is actually in performance mode and we are looking here at anywhere between 60 and 100 frames per second. So this actually is pretty good and pretty playable. I actually played this for an awfully long time. I actually had a pretty good go and uh, I think they came second at the very end. So yeah, it was a very, enjoyable experience it does look very plain very bland but again if you're building a modest system you don't have the money for a graphics card but you still want to play fortnite then this may be the way forward now the next one is far cry new dawn this is one we quite often play and this is again 1080p low settings there's no resolution enhancements or scaling on this this is basically just 1080p native so again frame scaling may improve things for you here a little bit we're looking at averages between 25 and 40 frames per second, depending where we are in the maps. As is the case with a lot of these open world games, it can change dramatically depending on your situation, your scenario, players on the map, 
NPCs, vehicles, all that kind of stuff. But the frame times themselves actually, again, relatively consistent frame times here. So even though it does dip into that kind of cinematic 25 frames per second or lower sometimes, it does still actually feel quite playable. And although not entirely enjoyable, it is basically doable. So if Far Cry New Dawn is your thing, or even some of the other Far Cry games, then you may get away with playing this. But again, I would probably suggest divvying up for a dedicated graphics card for this title. Now we're moving on to Wreckfest, the game 1080p, this is low settings. This is actually one that does appear to favour the Intel architecture somewhat. And we're looking here at somewhere in the region of about 50 frames per second on average, which actually, considering what is going on in this game, there's a lot of geometry, a lot of moving parts, a lot of things going on. So yeah, I was surprised actually, I was thinking this was going to do considerably worse. And to think that it did very much the same as Rocket League in terms of actual frames per second, and actually felt quite consistent and was pretty playable. So yeah, I'm uh, giving this a thumbs up, so for you Wreckfest fans out there, the Intel UHD 770 might be doable for you. So that's it for the games, let's take a look at where this does actually shine. So this is Premiere Pro. Now obviously this is a YouTube channel, we edit videos and we do use Premiere Pro. And I did a, uh, a quick test, so I actually went in to Premiere, turned off QSync or QuickSync, and actually rendered a video out, which is a 13 minute video, 4K, 30 frames per second in H.264. And we had a result of four minutes and 28 seconds, which is pretty much what I was expecting. But surprisingly, actually with QuickSync turned on, there was a surprising difference. And if you look in percentages, it's actually quite a high percentage. It basically drops almost a minute off the render time. So with quick sync on, we're looking at three minutes and 34 seconds. That is actually incredible. So that is kind of somewhere between a fifth and a quarter of the time. So for those of you that are actually video editing and you've got your Intel set up, make sure you go into Premiere, make sure you turn on quick sync, make sure it's enabled. You can use it with your other card. So if you've got your Nvidia card for your main editing card or your AMD card, then make sure you go in and actually turn on QuickSync as well, because you can do multi-GPU rendering. And that, I feel, is where this actually does pay dividends. If you're buying an Intel i5-13500 and you're doing a little bit of video editing, or maybe just using things like OBS, you are going to see some tangible differences between going for the non-graphics edition. So if you're going for the F, definitely, definitely worth doing. Turn it on QuickSync. And again, if you're just using it as a everyday productivity workhorse, you can do a little bit of gaming, but yeah, it's not the greatest of experiences. And you're going to be looking at somewhere between 30 and 50 frames per second in the majority of titles. So there you go. That's going to wrap things up. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and taken a look at the Intel i5-13500 integrated graphics on the UHD 770. If you've got any comments or questions, please let me know in the comments section below. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll be seeing you again in the very next video. Thanks for watching.